So welcome back everyone and our plight to bring this beautiful 190SL back from the dead. Originally just dropping by to try and get the car started for owner Dan, it clearly became apparent that this was a full on restoration. I thought maybe a bit off more than I could chew, but I'm in too deep now. So let's crack on. And to get straight back into where we left off, we're into those rusted up brake cylinders. Off with those springs and be careful, there's a lot of tension in these. So it's off with those banjo connections and careful not to lose those crushed copper seals and let loose that dirty old fluid. Undo the lock tabs and out with the bolt. Out with the bleed nipple. And then out with the cylinder. There is an easier way of doing this with better access and that's to remove the hub. But I'm doing this one the lazy way. And all these suspension components like the wishbones and everything else, they'll all have to be scraped off of grease and oil, cleaned up and all the grease nipples filled with fresh grease. Oh, and all these will have to be replaced. The flexi hoses. These clog up like arteries. Here's the old one. And there's the new. Again, off with the lock tab and the final bolt. And we're clear. Reuse the original pins. A little bit of grease. And when you do this, make sure the lock tabs go both ways. One over the cylinder itself and one over the bolt so it won't back off. Those anti-roll bar bushes on the left look shot so they all need replacing. But then again, what doesn't need replacing on this car? <laughs> Look, I know it all seems like a bit of a lost cause, but I promise you, once all the suspension's cleaned up with new components, it'll look an absolute treat. And be careful when you're doing this bolt up. Don't over tighten it, just nip it up, otherwise you'll split the cylinder in half. Don't over tighten the banjos, cause as you know, it's just a crushed seal. Getting the springs back on the real faff. So an easy way of doing this is, as I said earlier, just take the hub off for better access. The working class curse. Deadly. Now I know when going through the ignition system I said it'll be the starter motor but with a car that's been off the road for such a long time I just think it's best to replace everything for peace of mind. A new coil is fitted. So as luck would have it, I was able to acquire a brand new set of original ignition leads. So not only will it be right, but it'll look correct. And typical for these early Benzes is everything was designed for a reason. This tube was to keep the ignition leads separate to prevent intermittent spark and a misfire. But you know, most people just can't be bothered with the painstaking monotony of feeding the wires back through. Just dig in and do it properly. After a thorough clean up, of course. 
Notice how I clean up as I go along. I just think a clean engine bay is maintainable and much easier to work on when you can see everything in its place. Wait till you see this when I get finished with it. It'll be unrecognisable. Let's take a look at this. This looks really good. If you look at the top of the camshaft lobes here, they're all spotlessly clean. There's no scoring, not that I can see anyway. So all the little pinholes in here would be nice and clear, doing the job, spraying them with oil. Um, it literally looks like a brand new head. I'm really surprised, considering the car probably hasn't been driven for, I don't know. I know Dan said it was two years, now he's saying it was eight. I think it's probably 20, 25 years since the car's been used properly, so taking that into consideration, I think it's in really good shape. I'm really pleased. Next to the spark plugs. I know I cleaned these up in the last episode, but I've never been a big fan of Bosch spark plugs. These tend to soot up and cause a misfire. As good as the Germans are, a lot of things, I think the Japanese lead the way in this department. So I'm replacing these with a brand new set of NGK, which I think burn much hotter and much cleaner. Now with the carb still out, let's dig in and remove that dirty old starter motor.
Now I've carefully taken note of all the spaces and refitted the new starter in exactly the same way. But in doing this, I've come to a realization. Come and take a look at this. See this here, this washer. That's stopping this from fully engaging into the bell housing. See, it's getting in the way. So, whoever fitted this last time is an idiot. Come take a look at this. So this needs to fully engage and go flush with the bell housing. And that washer was in the way there, so it couldn't quite go in. And it was stopping this when it shoots out from engaging with the flywheel. So it couldn't have been doing the starter motor any good. I mean, I tested it a couple of times and it was intermittent. It was working sometimes, you know, on the bench and other times it wasn't. So uh, let's do it properly, eh? And it probably wasn't doing the ring gear or those teeth any favours. Speaking again of that previous mechanic, this is the old generator which should really be upgraded to an alternator. Look at the state of this bolt, it's not even the right size or tightened up. Clean up the contacts and tape up any exposed wire. Give it a little test. Come on, baby. That'll do. So now I feel like we're beginning to make some progress. I think I'm due a little break, don't you? Because I've been invited down to Bob's Big Boy Diner Classic Car Meet, which happens every Friday night in Burbank, 4 o'clock till 10. And I have to say, guys, it seems to me that enthusiasts here take it even more seriously than we do back home. Because even though I arrive at 8 o'clock, there's still around 100 cars here and more arriving as we speak. I suppose it's LA's version of the UK's Cars and Coffee or FJ's Coffee and Chrome or classic car meets at the Ace Cafe in London. Anthony, Gary, lovely to meet you. Gary, nice to meet you. And I couldn't help but admire your original coal before yes. Shelby. Yes, this is a very rare original 1965 Shelby Cobra. Yeah. It's a 427 SC, which is a competition version. It's very rare. It was built as a racing car, but it didn't really do much racing. But it's really valuable because it's so rare. Yeah. There's only like 31 with that designation as a 427 SC. It's incredible. And the chassis number is CSX3047. So people that know Cobras will understand. CSX3047. And how long do you own this? About 11 years. The car was back east in Maryland in the United States and the Cobra Club found out about it and they gave me a call and I bought it. Even in this That's state, true. it's going to be worth about $3 million. It is $3 million. I turned down the $3 million, exactly $3 million for this a year ago. I don't want to sell it. See, the collector car market has been gravitating towards originality. So there's a there's a group of, of collectors who will pay a lot more just the way it is than if I restore it. Look, it's absolutely amazing. It's the best car here. Thank you so much for Thank you. Me. Appreciate it. Thank and you. Good luck with it. Thank you. Go sir. back and get the three million. You can't okay. really <laughs> spend it. <laughs> I don't need the money, but thank you. All right. Nice to meet you. So the next day, back to the garage. Do you know what? I really wanted to hear this engine run before I went back. But because we're waiting on the delivery of this brand new fuel pump and there's no sign of it yet, 
and we're quickly running out of time. I think it's best we get these carbs fitted. It's on with that choke cable. And then the depths of despair at the 11th hour, that fuel pump finally arrives. The new pump is fitted, and using a new solid braided fuel line, originally meant for the Solex carbs, by sawing off a thread of bolts at the end and reshaping it to fit. This then allows me to connect it up to the new Webers. Beautiful. And after priming the pump and filling the chambers with fresh fuel, I call for Dan. So, the reason your heater isn't working is when you pull the cables inside, this should move this, and these are stuck solid. You've mm -hmm. got like a little brass barrel inside, and it becomes like kind of full of crud and it just, right. it just jams up. It's basically in here, this is that basically. And when you pull your cable, it'll open mm -hmm. the valve and your hot water flows through and it blows through your air vents here and that's what gives you heating. So that's basically stuck solid and on the other side will be exactly the same. Again, the so car's just been sitting up. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. well one for each side, yeah. So mm -hmm. you can just have one side if it's just you and the car or oh, can, whatever. Dual, if you're past dual these. thing. Yeah, like oh yeah. Modern, yeah. Very modern. S streets ahead of its time, yeah technology yeah um but what what's the clutch like can you remember the the uh, clutch well i think it's it worked pretty good come on be honest with me what was it like well i i, I don't drive clutch that often so i might have gr ground it a couple times uh, yeah. you know hello but other than that i think well, it would these, work these pretty are good famous could, for that. i could reverse and everything yeah the famous for it it could be a thrust bearing Mm -hmm. But I think the clutch will probably be locked up on this anyway, so we'll have to raise the back of the car, start it in gear. Mm -hmm. You normally hear like a crack, a big bang, mm -hmm. and it's freed up then. But I think your, your slave and your master will be gone on it. So we're, we're going to replace all them next time anyway. Okay. If we don't run out of time again. Yes. But uh, it's getting there. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's if we can get the delivery men to deliver the right way, well, when, when it'll we certainly get it, save a lot of time and give yeah. you a little bit of continuity. Yes. Yeah. But, um, I think we've broken the back of it now anyway. Well, it looks amazing. Those carburetors look so clean. Yeah. It's so crazy. When all this is detailed, I'll strip all this back. I'll put a new one of these on, a new fuse box. Mm -hmm. Repaint all this and then put all the jewellery back in. The new fuse box with the cover, the new mm -hmm. brake booster or servo units as we call them. And all this will be painted matte black again. I mean, you've got a nice clean area to work in. It's yeah, just, it's gonna be beautiful. you know, you feel nice driving it. It's like having a bath and washing your hair and, <laughs> you know, having a clean car. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. All right, we'll Get. put the bumper on the right way this time. Ah, don't blame me that for that. That wasn't you. <laughs> Come and have a look at this. <laughs> so Dan asked me what these holes were here. And I realized they're drain holes. They should be on the bottom. So whoever's worked on this in the past has put mm -hmm. the bumper on upside down. But that's not down to me, it's down to him. 
That's great. You've done an exceptional job so far, and I'm just more excited than ever. And then we're going to match the interior color and you know. Yeah, I'll repaint the seats, uh, yeah. get all that matching because it looks like about six different colors at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and there's little bits of chrome that I could do with cleaning up. That is going to be nice. And I believe the horn works just fine. I think that's a pretty oh, important safety for that. feature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything seems to work, like the lights all seem to work. Mm hmm. So, yeah. And oh, the most important is the clock. We have to make sure the clock is up to snuff. Oh, is it not working? I think it's very interesting until you open the glove box and you wind it. <laughs> nice one, Dan. All right, well, well done. Uh, we'll get there in the end. Yeah. Glad you're happy. So it's two clicks and then you push it in and turn it to the right. Oh boy. Whoa. That's beautiful sound. That? Six years, six years later. Six, 26 years, more well, like it. Yeah. That sounds good. And it ticks up. It will, if you keep, if it warms up, it'll yeah. just tick over on its own. It doesn't well, need to Usually I, I leave the choke out for about five minutes or less. What I would do before is I would turn it until it started. It usually took minutes. Yeah. Then as soon as it turned over, I, I'd pull the choke gently. That's how they showed me when I got yeah. the car. That's probably right. But if you gave that another turn now, and just, I just revved it a little bit more, it'll probably run on its own without a choke because it's, it's not cold and it's nice clean fuel, new carburetors, new pump. Wow, the new carburetors. That's awesome. Nice and clean that, isn't it? That's wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Wow. Pleased? I'm very pleased. Uh, well, we got it. It's been at, l at least six years since 26 then. 26 years. Come on. Uh, I, I can, uh, you know, I'm much younger than I look. <laughs> so I don't know how many years, but it has been a while since I heard that engine running. And it's, it's a thrill. I think it's probably been used maybe a couple of times in... 20 odd years well that's that's true because i would only even you know i got this car in 1990 and i probably only drove it a couple times a year but yeah i think now that might go a little different once we get this fully running well i'll come back and i'll finish the brakes off for you i'll do all the master cylinder and slave cylinders i'll put a new brake booster on uh i'll detail the engine bay i'll repaint your seats so everything matches and i'll flatten polish your paint and um yeah, you should have like a really nice usable classic then. Yes, this is this is very exciting. I, I'm, you you've uh, rekindled my entire love for this whole car. I mean, it it was like I've always valued it as something you know of an art object, yeah. but now I'm starting to feel the passion again. Well, so. I just hate them even more now after <laughs> all the work. No, I'm glad you're pleased anyway, Dan. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So it seems like I've broken the back of it, and after what seemed like a daunting task to begin with, even though I can now see light at the end of the tunnel, it's clear that I'm going to have to come back over here in a few weeks' time and finish the job. But I suppose there's one good thing that comes with that. It at least allows me the opportunity to meet up with some old friends and simply chew the fat about classic cars. Thank you for watching this episode of Classic Obsession. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you all next time.